Enjoy 1% merchant commission when you accept Lanka Pay cards. Contact these banks today. The country spends $500 million per month on fuel. It should be kept in mind that the current global crisis risks raising oil prices. Some estimate that global oil prices will rise by as much as 40% by the end of this year. In this context, the idea of introducing a coupon system for fuel cannot be ruled out. Somehow, we have to find 3,300 million US dollars worth of fuel for the next six months. It costs 40 million US dollars a month to import gas. We will require 250 million over the next six months for gas. The next three weeks will be a tough time for us in regards to fuel. It is time we all use fuel and gas as carefully as possible. Unessential travel should be limited as much as possible. Therefore, I urge all citizens to refrain from thinking about hoarding fuel and gas during this period. After those three difficult weeks, we will try to provide fuel and food without further disruptions. Negotiations are underway with various parties to ensure this happens. So in a few months, we will have to face serious difficulties and shortages in terms of our diets. We need to import food items to meet our daily requirements. It costs about $150 million a month. Chemical fertilizers are needed to boost local agriculture. It costs $600 million a year to import fertilizer for paddy, vegetables, fruits, other major crops as well as tea, rubber, coconut and export crops. In this context, we need $5 billion to ensure our daily lives are not disrupted for the next six months. We need to strengthen the rupee in line with the daily requirements of the citizens. Another $1 billion is needed to strengthen the rupee. That means we need to find $6 billion to keep the country afloat for the next six months. We are currently in talks with the International Monetary Fund. The United Nations has arranged for a worldwide public appeal on the 9th of June. They are seeking support to provide humanitarian assistance to Sri Lanka. Through this project, they have planned to provide $48 million over a four-month period to the food, agriculture and health sectors. The Prime Minister said the Chinese $1.5 billion swap is not in a position that can be used. Some time long ago, we borrowed under the swap facility from the People's Republic of China. There was a condition regarding the loan. We can use that money only if our country has enough foreign reserves for three months. We have not had foreign exchange reserves for three months since the loan was taken. Our former officials took loans to deceive the country. We will not be debt-free under this condition. We have requested the Chinese government to consider removing that condition from the agreement that has been signed with them. Japan is our long-time friend, but they are now unhappy with us due to the unfortunate events of the past. I urge the Parliamentary Committee on Public Finance to conduct an inquiry into the suspension of such valuable projects granted to us by our long-time allies for unstated reasons. We call on the International Monetary Fund to hold a conference to help unite our lending partners. Holding such a conference under the leadership of India, China and Japan will be a great strength to our country. Prime Minister Vikramasinghe also elaborated on the interim budget. Our country is not working like a well-oiled machine. We are not sure what we have to do first. This system needs to be overhauled. This is what we are doing now, resetting the system. The interim budget is the first step in rebuilding the system. Once we have taken the step, we will implement a modern system and install safeguards that will protect us from future calamities. But to do all of this, we need to restart the system. The interim budget will reduce unnecessary government spending while controlling other costs. We will also focus on revitalizing many areas affected by the crisis. The Prime Minister highlighted some of the key areas focused in the interim budget. Number one, taking maximum action to ensure food security, food to be given free to those who cannot afford it. Number two, increase in grant limit to support the people who are facing various hardships. The current annual expenditure on providing relief is $700 million and is expected to increase to $850 million. Farmers' loans obtained by farmers with less than two hectares of land will be slashed immediately. Free ownership to residents on free government land through guarantees like Swarnabhumi and Mahavali. Granting the ownership of urban flats to the occupants on concessional basis. 1,888 Chinese-funded apartments to be awarded for free via a dedicated program.
Raja Seve Pilimadeva, Apata Vena Sehaki. Public service must be viewed from a different angle. Efficiency and productivity have fallen to a very low level due to the provisions of unlimited employment in the public service. Some government employees have no obligation to their duties. Therefore, the public sector needs to be completely restructured and reformed. The Prime Minister extended an open invitation through his statement to the House. There is no point in dwelling in the past during this time. Let us forget the past for a moment and work to revive the country. I would like to conclude my speech by quoting Winston Churchill. A pessimist sees the difficulty in every opportunity. An optimist sees the opportunity in every difficulty. We take advantage of every opportunity that comes our way. We will use these opportunities to build the country with confidence. Hey, either Prasta again, Progen again, Rata Yali, Godan Agum, Subavadi or Sitam.